I've learned a lot of things this past year from doing YouTube and actually talking about my webcomic process. I think saying it all out loud and having it archived in video form has made me realize a lot of things I wanted to improve on in my process. And my process has definitely improved um, and become a lot more refined as I've grown as a webcomic artist. So I looked back on a bunch of my earlier videos about starting comics and honestly, I still agree with most of the advice I gave early on, meaning last year. <laughs> um, wow, not that long ago. But most of my early advice boils down to getting over your fear and jumping in headfirst and just starting your comic. You know, you're gonna make mistakes no matter what, and you're gonna learn a ton by working on a comic. Your art will improve by the simple act of working on it, especially if you challenge yourself through your work. For example, if you're someone who's not very confident in drawing full body people then making a comic and putting in lots of panels where you have to draw a full body person, well, that'll make you improve really fast. <laughs> Considering how many pages and how many multiple panels go into each page, you're just gonna get better by sheer exposure to drawing it over and over again. And I still think that's great advice for new webcomic creators. When I got into webcomics, I didn't know what I was doing. I was 17, I loved webcomics a ton, and I just wanted to make them. I jumped in right at the end of my high school career, <laughs> and I started posting my comics, and I just figured things out as I went along. I had a vague idea about how to make comics from going to panels at conventions and just reading comics. Looking back on it now, I didn't know what the heck I was doing and my skill level as an artist was not really there. However, I jumped in and I had a lot of fun and things worked out in the long run. <laughs> um, but had I known everything I know now, I probably would be in a very different place. So after working on comics for like five or six years now, Oh boy. Bones and I decided to pivot how we create and sell our comics, and I've been a lot happier since. Um, so I'm going to share everything I learned this past year and how it changed my comic process. And hopefully everything I say in here will help give you guys a better idea of how to go about making your own webcomics like a heckin' pro. So I have the amazing privilege of working with a writer. I do not have to write my own stories and scripts Bones, the other guy on this channel, handles all of that for me, so that's a lot off my plate. However, I'm still exposed to a lot of this stuff, so I will briefly kind of go into what Bones does on his end when we're starting a comic. Um, though if you watch his videos also on this channel, you'll get a much better idea about how he goes about writing scripts and outlining stories and all the, that cool stuff. But basically, when you sit down to figure out your comic, you probably already have a cool idea that you're really excited about, whether you've got like characters in mind or just a cool premise in mind, whatever. First thing you want to do is take that really cool idea and start figuring out an outline, start brainstorming plot points, etc., and get it all, all down on a sheet of paper or something or on your computer, whatever it is. Figure out what you want to do with your story. You know, figure out cool scenes you want to do and things you're really excited about and just get it all out there on the page so it's not floating around in your head and you forget cool ideas and all that stuff. And once you have a pretty decent idea of where your story is going, you know, what the genre is, what the mood is, you can start figuring out inspiration for the visuals and the narrative. This is something that has always really helped me in Bones, is just having kind of like guideposts of what we want to do. As people who are still learning how to craft stuff, we pull a lot of inspiration from works that are much better than ours. <laughs> um, so something that we do early on in a project is Bones usually has a few projects that he pulls inspiration from. And for him, I think that usually means just like story structure. For example, like Hero's Journey or something like that. Like he's usually pulling that from a few different narratives. Um, and he will usually show me these things that he's pulled inspiration from. And from there, I will start to figure out visual inspiration. So for example, our comic Nine Point um, for Bones that was very inspired by his love of like Legend of Zelda growing up and uh, his more recent love of Gurren Lagann and so I started looking into these things and pulling visual ideas and talking about like well what about this you know this visual stuff is appealing and then talking to him about what his ideas for the story are and really starting to figure out where we want the visuals to go and from there I create 
a mood board. Um, and a mood board is basically where I grab a whole bunch of work by other people, whether it's illustrations or book covers or color ideas or photographs, whatever it is, just things that feel like the story we're making, and I put them all onto a sheet of paper and I show them to Bones and we're like, does this feel like the story we want to tell? It's kind of like creating a proof of concept. Um, so instead of putting like hours and hours of work into drawing out a whole bunch of things only to scrap them, you grab pre-existing things and just say like, does this feel right? Is this the direction we want to go so that I can start emulating like the feeling or the colors? or the design style, whatever it is, like a really quick way to show that, see it concretely instead of guessing at it forever. And once we figure out that and we pick a direction that feels right, that is when I start to try out different styles, um, like physically on paper or on my tablet or whatever. It's really important to try out the style of what you want to do really early and really quickly. Do it as like lo-fi as possible. Again, you're just working on proof of concepts at this point. You're just trying to figure out, like I did this with the coloring style for Nine Point, where I just sat down and I drew like a portrait of a character and did a really quick like idea of what I, you know, a few different coloring styles that we could choose from. And we picked one that we really liked. Um, and they were really quick, like I did it all within like an hour. And then we had a really good idea of where we wanted to go and directions we didn't want to go. Um, so try it out, whether you're doing black and white or color, or you're trying out a new style, or you're using your, like, own natural style, just put it down on paper and see how it looks before you commit it to a comic page. And once you have all this, like, brainstorming and your plot outline and your inspiration and your style stuff, like, once you have all that pretty well fleshed out to whatever, like, level of comfort you want it to be, if you're someone who just needs to do, like, a little bit of it and then you feel really excited about it, that's fine, or if you need to, like, spend a couple months figuring it out, that's also okay. Just whenever you feel like you have enough to start going, and maybe if you feel like it's been forever and you still don't feel ready, might be time to jump in. But anyways, once you have all that done to your comfort level, start writing your script. And I definitely hear all over the place different webcomic creators write a different amount of script. What me and Bones do, he usually has written several chapters and volumes before I even start working on the comic pages. And that just, it really helps stop things like plot holes or needing to do rewrites because by the time I catch up to the script, he's already way ahead. You know, it keeps us from having to retcon stuff. It gives lots of guidance to foreshadowing and design elements that we need to think of in the future. It's just really great to have your concrete script ready and in front of you so you get a really good idea of like how your whole comic looks. This doesn't mean you have to finish the whole comic if you're doing something that's like a thousand pages that still takes quite a bit of time to write. So I usually recommend like a few chapters um, just to be safe. But the more you write, the better because then you can go back and change things and have lots of time before your comic pages catch up. Now once you have your script done, let's say you get chapter one done. That's a good amount. Go through chapter one, catalog all of your characters, all of your scenes, settings, important props, and, you know, extra characters, you know, non-main characters and background characters, and put it all into a nice little document, you know, separate it into categories of characters, settings, etc., and keep it on hand. It seems really tedious right now, especially if you only have chapter one written, but it will save you a lot of time and stress in three months when you have forgotten everything you've written and you're looking at it and you're like, wait, I had to design this character? Who is this? <laughs> or you forgot a setting or something. I have learned this year that it's so amazing to have just like a checklist of all the things you need to make so that you don't forget anything and it's all there. You can check if you've done it. It also helps from keeping like the amount of prep work you have to do from feeling too daunting. Um, it gives you kind of like a graph to check things off of from. Does that make sense? It's like, it's like in NaNoWriMo where you can check your progress on the bar graph that goes up. It's like that. You can see how far you are from your goal and how close you're getting and you can, you know, you can set goals using it, but it's just great to have a catalog to track your progress. It makes you feel really good, stops it from feeling daunting. And once you have this catalog, that's like, you have everything you need to start designing your characters, your settings, etc. 
So personally, I start with character sheets because I really love drawing characters and designing them. So what I usually do is I'll start with my main characters because they really will set like, they, they set like the standard for all your other characters. And honestly, you want to spend the most time on your main characters because you'll be drawing them the most throughout your comic. So make sure you do like a turnaround sheet just showing how they look from like the front and the back and the side. You know, make sure you draw their costume. If they have multiple, you know, clothing changes, make sure to draw those out. Draw out how they express and how they move. That stuff's really important. I also find it's very helpful to kind of write down notes about their personality and then see if you can get that to like show visually in how they dress and how they move. And with your main characters, make sure that they are Make sure that they have an interesting design, and I know that's very subjective, but also make sure that it's simplified enough that you can draw it over and over and over again in your comic without destroying yourself. Don't make it too detailed. That's all I'm saying. As you get away from your main cast, like your main character, your villain, important secondary characters, the farther away you get like in importance of character, put less work into their character sheets. If it's just like background characters that are gonna fill up a crowd scene, just do like a lineup of quick sketches of them. They don't need to be super detailed because they're gonna show up for like one panel. And there you go, make all your character sheets. Once you have those, start working on your settings. Make sure to draw out little maps of your settings. The way I think about it is when I start drawing a setting, I draw it in 2D in like a little top-down map version. Um, and I do this for like indoor settings, like a room or a house, um, as well as like a big outdoor setting, like a woods or a city street. Um, and I just do a little top-down to figure out the blocking of my characters, meaning where they're moving around in the scene, where important props are in the scene, um, and where I'm gonna put my camera, I guess. Like, how will these panels be staged? So I, th I start with that. I start with my little 2D top-down version, and then from there I draw a 3D version. Now, this is very daunting when you're starting out, but give it a try. The, your 3D attempts at backgrounds. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect perspective, but it's a really good idea to kind of draw your backgrounds out as you'll see them in your comic so that when you get to the comic, it's not the first time you're drawing this background. It'll help. Trust me. <laughs> Um, I also like to draw in little sketches, seeing how the characters will interact with the scenery, just in case, like, it looks weird, or I, you know, I like to check the scale of things so I'm not drawing stuff too big or too small. But that's just me. That might be too much detail. <laughs> and make sure you check out your, your colors and your mood. How will they affect your character's colors if it's a colored comic? Once you have your characters and your settings done, you can draw important props if they're needed. Though usually, if they're, like, a really important character prop, I tend to put them into their character sheet, like a character's weapon or like an important piece of clothing or something. However, if it's just like, you know, your MacGuffin, your magic crystal that they're searching for, like do a design sheet for it so that this really important object has a design and you don't draw it weird a hundred pages into your comic. <laughs> Once you have all this prep work done, no, you don't get to start on your comic pages yet. You have to do your thumbnails. I know more prep work. The worst. But thumbnails are very important going into your webcomic because they, they're basically how you figure out your composition or your page flow, meaning how your reader is directed from one panel to the next to make sure that they are reading in the proper order. Um, thumbnail sketches are very quick, but they take a lot of thought. Um, they are how you translate your script into your final pages. Um, some people skip thumbnailing, however, I find they are super, super helpful for, I guess, like, quality assurance testing. <laughs> you can try out a whole bunch of different layouts for your page without putting hours and hours of work into it. So if you start with doing your pencils or your inks even, like, you might finish a picture and look at the page and be like, oh no, this doesn't work this is a really bad composition, it just doesn't fit well together, and then that's hours of work that you've wasted. Not wasted, but like, you spend hours of work on something that you have to scrap. So thumbnails are so important for just getting the bad sketches and the bad compositions out of the way, and it's just another step of like, making your stuff look nice and having time to look back on it and check it and see if it's good without spending a whole bunch of time on it because the thumbnail sketch will take maybe 10 minutes to draw. So now that you have your thumbnails done, you have your your references done, you figured out your style and your inspiration for your story and you have your script written, you finally get to start working on pages. 
For me personally, I start with pencils. I used to do pencils super, super loose. I'm slowly working on getting them a lot tighter so that I don't have to redraw my inks a whole bunch of times to get it right. I try to get a really nice foundation for everything that's gonna go into the page. That's how I do my pencils. And then inking and coloring are a whole other beast, but you do all that. I mean, all that comes with practice. Making your comic pages really pretty or cool or awesome will come with practice. Um, I mean, same with any of the stuff that I've talked about. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it, especially if you're paying attention to like what works and you're always studying your craft. When you first start your comic, your pages probably aren't going to look super good, but that's totally okay. That's what webcomics are about. They're about your journey of improvement because people are going to see your your comic pages with when it's like 200 pages in and they're gonna be like wow the art here is beautiful and then they're gonna go back to the beginning and if the art doesn't look as good they don't care they're gonna read until they get to the beautiful art so don't worry about the quality of your art going in don't worry about the quality of any of this stuff it's just important to do it and get into the habit of doing it because it creates a really strong foundation for your beautiful comic pages. So before you start posting this stuff, make sure you create a buffer. Something I struggled with for a very long time was posting every day, not every day, but like keeping up with an update schedule where I was posting like two or three pages a week and I was finishing them like the night before or the week before that they had to go up and I was constantly just struggling and working all the time and I never got any time to rest and it was really panic inducing <laughs> and a lot of my pages did not turn out as high quality as they could have because I was always struggling and running to keep up. So make sure you create just like a stockpile of extra pages so that you have time to keep up. And if you get sick or you need a vacation, you still have pages going up, um, but you don't have to scramble to keep up with your update schedule. Alternatively, you can also just not post pages until they're done. Because <laughs> again, something that I used to do was I would struggle and run to keep up with weekly updates. But in the end, currently, we're on hiatus with one of our comics and people are still interested in it. So... I'm just going to post these pages whenever I have time, but it's still really important to get that buffer done so that you have more pages coming out than not, I guess. And finally, once you have your buffer and you love yourself and you're going to take care of yourself and you're not going to struggle, push yourself to work harder than you need to, start posting your comic. Jump in, post it. If, if you are afraid of people seeing your work, you really need to get over that fear. You're not going to get better at people seeing your work. Even if you get to a really high skill level, you're still going to be scared of it because showing people your art is inherently scary because it's showing people like a really important part of yourself or it's showing some people something that you really care about. So it's always going to be scary, even if you're the most amazing artist in the world. So just start posting it, get over that fear, and more likely than not, People are going to think your comic is really cool anyways. It's going to appeal to someone. All my comics are really heckin' weird and people seem to like them. So that is all I have. It's a very long-winded thing about comic prep. But that's all I have about my comic process and how I start web comics now. And it's very different than how I used to do it where I never prepped anything. I never prepped character designs or setting designs or even style for a comic. I just figure it out once I draw the first page. So I'm very, very grateful for all the growth I've been able to do this year and everything I've learned and all this stuff I've talked about. If you're really interested, you can watch my videos. Like I have a webcomic vlog series where I literally just talk about my growth as I figure out how to make a webcomic from like the prep stages. I'm just starting on thumbnails and creating pages in the next couple weeks. You can see me being a work in progress, improving my, my, my process and learning how to do all the stuff that I talked about. So you can go watch those if you want a more in-depth look at it. But I thought I'd just put it all here in a little guide, I guess. I feel like it's too rambly to be a guide. But this is what I do now. I hope it inspires you and gets you excited about doing all this stuff because I love comic prep. I love designing characters. I love making settings. I like coming up with ideas for comics and reading Bones' scripts is super fun and making comic pages is really fun. 
So I want you guys to go out and do all these things if they work for you. If it hurts your soul to do these things, you don't have to. You can just jump in. That's fine. Like I'm saying, it all works. This is just how I do it now. And I really like it this way. And I'm going to keep doing it. These are also things that will also really help you if you, say, work with a creative partner or um, an editor or something. Because having all this prep work to show someone your your thought process and your concepts is a really useful skill when you're working with other people. So go do it. Go start your comics. Go start preparing all your wonderful characters and settings and scripts and try out all your cool style stuff. It's really great. It's really fun. And I wish you all tons of luck starting your comics in 2019. What, what a heckin' year. <laughs> so thank you so much for listening to me. I just want everyone to make more comics because comics are great. I really like comics. And when I was learning how to make web comics, I was always searching for someone to tell me how um, and tips on how to do it right, because I was always scared I was doing it wrong. So, here you go. Here's what I've figured out so far <laughs> about making comics. I don't know how to end this video. <laughs> I guess check out the Discord. Bones and I have a Discord channel where you can meet other people who are starting their web comics, and you can have fun and share pictures of your pets. That's all we made the Discord for. I just want cute, cute animals. Goodbye.